Golden, I got another question for you again. <laughs> um, I know that more and more new gong players to this gong playing family, that's very good. Now we can buy hundreds of uh, gong players in one country, right? Maybe thousands in US, in Europe, thousands of gong players. That's very good. Every year, got more and more new uh, gong players. But one question is, can you uh, tell us more specific what's the major um, key point for the new gong player to, uh, to remember or the tips or the advice for new gong player? But before that, please subscribe our YouTube channel because we have many videos. Every week we give you a new video and uh, uh, press the notification bell and give us a thumb up. Yes? Well, uh, I don't think this video is going to be terribly long. <laughs> and the tips that I, I typically that. give to long, new gong players last for mm, the, the best part typically of a six day training. So um, it's very difficult to, um, to concertina all that uh, information into just a short video. Yeah. So I, I'm going to rebound the question back to mm -hmm. you and say, and, and to give me an, uh, an idea of what you found particularly challenging yes, if you think about point. when you, you started playing the gong mm. or also perhaps mm. um, what you feel as though um, because you've seen many uh, new gong players, students oh, yeah. coming through, um, what you felt mm. they, were, they were struggling with in particular. I think the key issue for the new gong player, I say me, because years ago, before I met you, although I've been trained by many different teachers, Kunalini gong players, and uh, very good gong players, but I got a very key issue is, I play very loud, because I thought, oh, gong should be very loud, very... So I know this is a key issue for me. Okay. Yeah. So this business of loudness is actually yeah. how loud is a is a yeah. a tricky issue for for mm -hmm. for for, for uh, new gong players. New gong players. Yeah. Um. And my experience is that um, that can be easily be uh, for inexperienced players. They they can tend to play too loud, or they can be over timid. Yeah. And play yes, yes. too quietly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what's the solution? Yeah. Um, how do we know? It's, okay. Because many, do you remember, many students also ask us, how do I know this is loud enough or not too, mm -hmm. not, no, right. too timid? Um, uh, part of this is great, you, you get better at this in time, but always what I try and remind um, uh, uh, beginners to do is there's because they get so wrapped up in the rationale of, oh, am I holding the mallets correctly? Am I standing mm, in the right place? Mm, mm. And they're asking themselves lots of questions all the time. Mm, and I think mm. this and can be, right. yeah, they're not feeling what's yeah. going on. Mm -hmm. And this is, a, this, is a, this is a relationship you build up between yourself and the gong. Mm -hmm. And it's a conversation, if you like, between you and mm, the gong. Yeah. You, the gong is sitting there looking mm. beautiful, yeah. looking full of promise, if you like, and you're standing there with a the mallet and nothing is going to happen mm. until you actually... Strike it. <laughs> or play it. Sound it. I yeah, mean, again, it. We're, we're careful the kind of word we use. Hit the gong, oh, bang the gong, yeah, strike the gong. Yeah, many people like gong, to use that, I know. You know. Hammer the gong. I mean, these are very violent terms yeah. and I, I, I prefer sound the gong. It's mm -hmm. my favourite term. Play the gong is good, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not so good at strike or hit okay, or bang. Okay, back to the but point. But anyway, yeah. no, my, the thing that I emphasise to, to, to beginners and, and even more advanced players mm -hmm. is to enhance their listening ability. This is absolutely key. If Very you're big really issue. listening and yeah. really hearing to the impact of what you're mm -hmm. doing, what you're trying to do is that we have this lovely term, we're getting the gong to speak, first mm -hmm. of all. Now, when we are talking, 
speak is a great word to use because because we are so used to what speak. If somebody is talking to us in a very loud, aggressive manner, we don't like it. No. You know, we, it turns us off. We go. We don't. We're not interested. In this loud, argumentative, oh, rude, <laughs> very, very, very loud. Very loud. Before. So you were. <laughs> it's as if you were like shouting at somebody. Very, very loud. Yeah. Hello, I'm Evening, and I'm here playing the gong. Um. Uh, 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 by the same token, if you're very timid and hello, I'm Gordon and I'm very pleased to meet you know, nobody's going to be interested no. because they can't even hear you. Mm -hmm. So, actually, that's a very good way of kind of how do you. But not, how can we know? How do we you know? We're just well, beginner. How yeah. do I. I don't how, do we know, how do we know yeah. how to speak to somebody? Um, and the, uh, probably, gong is so yeah. big. I have One the 38, you know, 36 gongs should play yeah. loud. Listen, is it? One of the things yeah. about this that, that, that I'm going to use this, um, this uh, example of speaking mm -hmm. because we allow the gong to speak when we're playing the gong mm -hmm. is that it's one thing to be used to talking to somebody like I'm talking to you, standing next to you and we're having a conversation. Mm -hmm. And I can, I'm not going to talk too loud or too quietly because I've learned over many, you know, experiences it's of talking. Very loud for me. <laughs> talking um, well, I'm also talking to the video camera. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, you know, we, we, we know that this is different to like public speaking when you're stood in front of 10, 20, yeah, 30, 40, 60 yeah. people. But if they pray for the 40 people, 60 so, people. So we have uh -huh. to learn how to project out to that. Mm -hmm. So that is a point about making the gong mm -hmm. speak. And it's different if you're in a small room playing for two or three people. What's loud and what's appropriate mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. is different to if you're in a big room with 40, mm -hmm. 50 people. Mm -hmm. And the um, beginners tend to play in only small rooms with a small group. So mm -hmm. that's a good starting point. Mm -hmm. um, but um, as I say, getting back to this, um, thinking about well, how would I speak? Mm -hmm. What's a, an appropriate level having a conversation with two or three people in the small mm -hmm. room? Well, that's a good starting point. And then this business about listening mm -hmm. and enhancing your listening is also very important. Mm, that's a very big issue. It's a very big issue, yeah, but we, it's still very We will important. have another uh, video talking about how to enhance the listening. It's too abstract. It's very difficult to understand. But the second issue for many gong, new gong players they got is they are, like you say, they're always thinking, oh, they're thinking the, too much. Uh, yeah. What stroke yeah. I'm going yeah. to play? Oh, I yeah. have a role. And after yeah. role, mm, is a tsunami or is a strike in the door, you know? Indeed. And the mm. other thing that happens when, and I, I can remember this back from personal experience when I was starting to play the gongs some years back now, I'm mm -hmm. um, getting lost in the sound of the bigger gongs. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the gong sound is so um, powerful that if you're not prepared for it mm -hmm. and properly grounded and kind of standing your ground, there's this very peculiar balance between imposing yourself on the gong and then playing too loud and it sounding very brash and mm -hmm. too noisy and getting lost where the sound of the gong just envelops you and That's you're, you're issue. kind of off with the fairies and, and kind of can't control what's going on. That's another issue I didn't ask. But, you know, my question is, many people are thinking, what's going on next? Always thinking, oh, yeah, I'm playing the role and then what happened next? Yeah. I so, should play. I Should I change my lay or should I, you know? So we have this, mm -hmm. the other difficult thing and the yeah. thing that we have to learn none of these things necessarily come easily some of them are more natural for some people than others mm -hmm. um, if you've got a musical background very often it can help oh, yeah. if you've got a therapeutic yeah. background actually it can help because you know mm -hmm. if you're you know if you're thinking if you're if you come from say for example a massage background mm -hmm. then you know there's different massage techniques now if you're thinking too much about the massage technique you're not really Really doing the massage properly because mm -hmm. you're not in yeah. the flow of it. Yeah. It's the same thing that the balance between the left brain and the right brain, yeah. and the thinking yeah. and the feeling, mm -hmm. uh, and the rationale and the intuition, intuition, the the kind of being aware of the flow between you and the people you're playing mm -hmm. to, and everything. These things are really important. As I say, they can come more naturally and easily to others. But the thing that we can do with beginners is to encourage them to relax 
and not to think it too much very often mm -hmm. that can be a problem it can sometimes be a problem the other way around where people will say and we laugh about this but it's actually a serious thing oh I'm divinely inspired I'm in touch with the universal energy I don't need to think or learn anything because you know God the universe, will show, the yeah. universe will show me the way, and and so what we hear is this kind of noisy racket going on, uh, and, um, really and this can yeah. be a big issue um, that we have to remind people that they're not. That however divinely inspired they are, then they do actually need to be grounded and centered, mm -hmm. and be aware of what they're mm -hmm. doing as well. Yeah, and what else you have uh, um, advice for indeed. the well new yeah. comp player? Well, that's the we goal. Yes. That's the first few minutes of my six-day uh, <laughs> induction training course. So, yeah, I mean... Um, oh, come to our training. Okay. Uh, okay, I mean, I think, I think this business that, that I was talking about, about um, there's this lovely exit, what I will actually uh, divulge from people who, are, who haven't been to, to any of my training is... This no, idea, of, yeah, gesture, you this have, idea, yeah. this idea of you've got the gong and you've got you, and 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 you've got to get a balance right between, uh, be, be, so that the <coughs> gong isn't dominating you, so that you're not actually present, um, and so being grounded and centered is really really important. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that, and and establishing this rapport with the gong, um, so that there's a kind of a balance between yourself and the gong. Um, is actually also really important. I think these all these tips is not only reply to the gong player to all the sound therapy like singing bowl, like tuning bowl. Oh like. sure, yeah, <coughs> absolutely. I mean, even other therapies. You know, yeah, I mean, I was just yeah. talking about I was talking about massage, but I mean, you could think you could think of many other things. You know, somebody who's who's new to Reiki healing, if they're thinking too much about what they're doing, yeah. they're not doing it properly. I would okay. say. Thank you very much. We got more video, more content to share with you. Please remember subscribe and press the bell. We we'll see you next time. Bye for now.